Okay, so now we're going to try and peel off enough of the kept on tape. And kept on tape tears really easily. And if it didn't work so well with ABS, no one would ever use it, um, for at least for rep wrap stuff. But it does, it, its adhesion just dramatically increases once you actually start using this. So what I'll usually do is I will tape beyond the plate, and I'll keep pulling this back being very very careful not to actually rip it and in a little bit we will have enough tape okay so now we got enough tape to start and what we'll do is we'll just kind of take our finger and go across the starter part here um, we can always go back and uh, Windex it later but it's very important to get it to adhere good. And then here's where an important part of credit cards, you never knew they were so valuable. Well, they're not, but uh, uh, take an old disposable uh, prepaid debit card or debit card or credit card or use someone else's. Uh, anyway, go ahead and we're going to use it as a squeegee. So we're going to actually kind of walk this back and squeegee it as we're laying it down. You know, we've got this, you know, pretty firmly attached to the table. And so now we are going to squeegee this and you don't want to go like super fast with this because it'll kind of like ruin it but you don't want to go super slow either anyway in a little bit you have it done okay and the key is that you don't want to actually put bubbles in it if it looks a little off uh, in some places uh, you can work some of that out just by going back over and over again with this. Um, the truth is, as you get good at it, uh, the edges are always a little weird, uh, but as you get good at it, then it actually uh, will look like a yellow mirror once you're done with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this down right up next to the other piece. So I just leave even the, the bad part of this you know, stuck there. I don't really care uh, too much about it. I'm going to cut it off anyway. Okay, the same thing as before. You go across with your thumb or finger just for the starter thing and you just slowly peel this back. The reason you do it slow is because this stuff is so easy to rip uh, no matter what, what thickness you get of the kept on tape. Um, Good news about thin kept on tape is it conducts uh, heat very good and it's electrically very resistant. Uh, actually, it doesn't conduct heat very good. Uh, the good thing about kept on tape is that it uh, uh, resists heat very good. In fact, you can use this, and this is the same stuff that if you want to, you can actually wrap around uh, the heater um, nozzle and the heat core of your uh, extruder. And the good part about that is that it will, um, you know, keep it a little bit of heat protection, you know, uh, a little bit of R value there, but it's also very electrically resistant. And so uh, it works out really, really good for, um, you know, keeping wires and stuff that otherwise might melt with insulation. So we're going to go ahead again and kind of walk it back this way, kind of keeping pretty good pressure on that. And what we don't want to do is overlap this. If you have a slight sliver, that's okay. I mean, it's not ideal, but um, the truth is this stuff sticks really good. So um, you can actually kind of walk it back, or you can redo the whole thing if you want to. The uh, purpose of this is just to show you this is my method of doing it. I'm sure there's quite a bit of others uh, that have their own way of doing it. But um, this is one way that I use of actually getting the capped on tape. The, you know, it's okay to have a slight sliver between them, but what you don't want to do is have it where it overlaps the two. And if you overlap, then you got to undo it. The good news about this Captain Tape is it's very thin, so it's not as bad as like having blue tape overlap. But um, nonetheless, if you get good at it, uh, you won't have any overlap at all. So that worked out pretty good. You have minor bubbles and stuff that pop up once in a while. Um, especially with 4-inch tape. It's just easy for it to do. If you happen to get a bubble on there, all you do is you take your razor, and uh, sometimes it's enough just to poke it, but other times you actually have to get right in there and you slice it, and then you just work it out with this. 
And so there's number two. So we're going to slice that and start up again. We're going to slowly pull back the tape again and start over, minimizing the spacing as much as possible between there. And then we're going to pull this back. To avoid any tears. Well, it looks like I got a tear coming, but the, the good news, you know, is that uh, it decided to tear past the plate, so we don't have to do it again. All we do is we go back again, and you just kind of put a lot of pressure on it, but kind of walk it this way. Keep squeegeeing it. And I'd rather have a slight gap than an overlap any day, so if you have to. You know, uh, a couple uh, um, thousandths of an inch or, you know, very small fractions of a millimeter, that's not going to affect anything. Um, mainly you want 99% of your uh, part to stick. And uh, anyway, so there we go. We got another one done. So now we got to redo and set up. Slice this. And we start off again. Pull enough of the caps on tape with the tear so that it starts up as though the tear never happened. And that's kind of a trick sometimes. It's kind of like, uh, in a lot of ways, it's uh, kind of like scotch tape, only it's much, much thinner and it's uh, uh, quite a bit more difficult to get it to, to go really, really well. Okay, so here we go again. So, and if you don't get it started exactly perfect, uh, caps on tape, you know, it can actually stretch a little bit. I mean, the thinner the tape, the better for stretching. If it's thick, thick caps on tape or thick uh, PET, uh, fat chance of getting it to stretch good enough, uh, especially the wider stuff. The wider it is, uh, the less flexibility you're going to have, and uh, less flexibility you're going to have, the more problems you're going to have. So. Anyway, we just keep pulling it slowly, keeping it constantly in tension. And it looks like I got it a little bit off on this one, uh, but we can hopefully, without tearing it, reposition it a little bit. Around the edge of the glass would be the other place to that you would tear. Okay, so we're gonna set up again. Put it there and peel this back so that we get a very good first seal. Once you get the first seal good, then the rest of it actually is quite a bit easier. If you don't get the first part done and you're not starting in the right direction, uh, the rest of it's going to be horrible. And if you happen to do one of these stripes and uh, uh, it doesn't look so perfect, uh, big deal. Um, you know, what you really want is the part to stick really good more than anything. And uh, practice does make perfect, or at least close to it. Uh, I'm certainly not the, the best at doing this, but uh, I figured I'd show you a video at least of my method of doing it. So you can, if you got a better way of doing this, definitely post it on YouTube because uh, we're all interested. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have probably two more stripes. If it turns out you only make small parts, uh, you don't even want to waste the tape. Don't even put it on the outside edges. It doesn't really matter. This stuff has so much, you know, so many yards on a roll. Uh, I think there's something like 30 meters or 33 yards of this stuff on there. Um, that's a lot of square footage. Uh, you know, it's a lot of surface area that you can cover. So if you waste, you know, half the roll, big deal. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it is kind of expensive, but it's not horribly expensive. Um, it's better to get a good build surface uh, than to uh, save a couple bucks. Because the truth is, the plastic you're going to put on this is way more expensive 
than the tape that you're going to use with this. Okay, so here we go. Let me see. Kind of got that one a little off. I'm going to try and peel it back a little bit. Without tearing it. Yay. Okay, like I said, we just want to start off so that it is right up on this. And if it leaves a, a small gap, uh, that's okay too. It takes three or four times sometimes to get this on there, right? Okay. And, okay. So that's a little bit of bubbles on that edge. That's really not going to affect anything because you're going to end up clamping on this side anyway. So, take your debit card, squeegee, and keep squeegeeing back towards you. I mean, some people do this pretty quick. Um, I guess uh, if you're really good at it, then you can do it real quick. But uh, most of us take a long time to get this thing done. And there we go. Cut it off. And last little bit, uh, you can either leave it or you can tape it. We're going to tape it just for the purpose of showing how you do it. Just for giggles. And the last little part, um, normally people don't print all the way out to the end of it. Um, but the good news, you can kind of do a little bit of a cheat with this and actually tape the whole thing at the same time because you're not so interested in so many bubbles out there. But you just run your finger or your thumb up there. And I got a little off on this side. We'll just uh, redo it. There you go. And that is my way of doing it. Once you get it all done, you're going to squeegee everything. You can hear the edge of there. And people tell you how sharp glass edge is. If you have it actually done at Lowe's or other places, it although it is sharp, it's not the kind of sharp that I can grab it and I can actually uh, move these all the time and uh, I grab it on the edges like this and I've never cut myself ever so um, it's not that terribly sharp it's not like a razor blade kind of sharp anyway once you're done with that you go right against the edge cut all four or all three or four sides depending on how you do it I do it a three-sided method like this and that is how you do kept on tape